So I, I devoted a chunk of an episode to this guy, and now he's decommitted. What the? You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Nittany Lions your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. My name is Zach Seiko, your host as always, and I feel like I just wasted a bunch of time. I just did a bunch of work and research and scouting and reporting to all of you out there for absolutely nothing. Devin Carter has decommitted from Penn State, has backed off his uh, verbal commitment, leaving NC State through the transfer portal to come to Penn State. And now uh, there, there's other news to go along with this. I'm going to explain all of that in today's episode. Uh, also talk about now what Penn State needs to do at wide receiver through the transfer portal, what the outlook uh, is at this point in time with Devin Carter decommitted. And Penn State men's basketball picked up a win, 85 to 66 over Indiana. That was a fun game to watch. And uh, my takeaways uh, from the game will be in the final segment. But uh, Devin Carter, Mr. Carter is no longer a Nittany Lion. Um, I, I'm just I'm just in shock. In shock, I tell you. Um, because I devoted a, a good chunk of an episode to him. You know, I based it around him. And I, I feel like I have to delete it now. I'm, I'm not going to because I thought it was a good episode. It had some good content in it and what Drew Aller could do with a big-bodied wide receiver. But uh, egg on my face, right? Uh, here's the story here. So Devin Carter decommitted from Penn State. Well, okay, NC State wide receiver uh, transfer uh, entered the transfer portal uh, after the Rose Bowl, committed verbally to Penn State even before he set foot on campus. Uh, so he just felt like he knew. Uh, then he stepped on campus. He visited. And apparently the visit went very well. Uh, apparently it was great. Uh, he paid the application fee, the enrollment fee, whatever have you. He was getting set up with classes uh, but apparently there was a snag. I don't know what that snag was. Uh, I'm just I'm following the reporting here. Uh, there was a snag and Devin Carter decided not to enroll. He paid the acceptance fee and then that was that was that. Um, the visit went well, but it, it wasn't enough. Uh, so then the rumor was he wanted to sleep on it. And oh, oh, he he slept on this decision. All right. Uh, it was fishy how Penn State, the football social media uh, announced the additions of Storm Duck and Alex Falcons and Riley Thompson, who, who all came in. They entered the transfer portal and they committed to Penn State and now they're enrolled. They're taking classes and Penn State said, hey, it's great to have you on campus. One guy was missing. And this was before a lot of this news broke. Uh, yesterday, all of this news came out yesterday over the course uh, of Wednesday. Um, and as of yesterday evening, this is where it gets very interesting um, because reports indicated that Penn State was still an option, that there were just other schools he was in contact with, uh, and it was just kind of going to go back to a, a neutral battle. He was going to make a, a decision later on. But as of last evening, he's now flipped to West Virginia. So we went from Devin Carter uh, to being a, a red zone threat, a, a nice target for Drew Aller, someone he couldn't miss because of his size. And now he's with the Mountaineers uh, at West Virginia. Um, it's definitely out of the case that Penn State is it's not an option anymore. So those those rumors are are gone. Uh, so I take everything back. I said I have nothing positive to say about him. I don't, what receiver? Uh, who? Devin Carter? Who? Never heard of him. Uh, all, all joking and teasing aside, uh, it, it does. I, I did find it a little amusing, I must say, because he he was in, he he was committed, and you know you, you do the scouting, you do the reporting, you, you want to be able to see what this guy in the future could bring to Penn State. And, and at the end of the day, it's absolutely nothing. He's not bringing anything to Penn State. Um, this this hurts in the moment, but I don't think it hurts too much long term because Devin Carter actually only has one more year of eligibility. Um, so it wasn't somebody that Penn State could have had around for multiple seasons and uh, within the program. Uh, this was a, a one and done type of deal. Um, and this was the case of NIL. This is the the bad side of name, image and likeness because uh, West Virginia uses the collective. 
they they get businesses to basically sponsor athletes to to come play like like other places uh and that's fine penn state just does it differently penn state doesn't say hey here's a blank check you write whatever number on it and whatever money's in the collective we'll give it to you they don't do that they say let's bring you in and then help you achieve your financial value, your financial goals. It's not, well, we have $5 million left in the collective and we're going to give it to you uh, if you sign before you do anything else. No, it's we're going to work with you to develop strategies to maximize your marketability. And personally, I like that, but that's not everybody's cup of tea. And I don't, I don't know all of the logistics here. That might not have been the case. Maybe Devin Carter felt like he had a better relationship at West Virginia, and that's fine. You know, there's some more openings uh, at West Virginia. Maybe there's a little less competition. He can get on the field right away in his final season, rather than battling it uh, wholeheartedly uh, at Penn State. I don't know, but in this case, just because of what we know about West Virginia. And uh, a lot of the way that Southern schools particularly conduct themselves in name, image, and likeness, that this was, uh, there, there was definitely probably some finances in play here. Um, but that's the way Penn State does it. And as a Penn State fan, as somebody that kind of, I, I respect that. <laughs> I respect that a way uh, of how you conduct the program. It's not, we're just going to give you a check. I don't care what your value is. We're just going to give you X amount of money. Come play with us. doesn't matter if you're a fit or not. They say, we're going to work with you so individually you can maximize your value. Penn State just, just doesn't do it that way. They just don't cut checks whenever they feel like it. So uh, I, I, I like that. I like that approach. I, I really do. And, and you're getting the players have bought into it, the ones that are uh, at Penn State. That's the most important part of it. So now it's kind of looking towards what this situation means because uh, in-house, Penn State's got a lot of collective talent in the wide receiver room, but is it ready? Are those guys ready? Uh, what are their options still remaining in the transfer portal? Because a lot of guys have committed other places, and we're going to discuss all of that coming up next. Today's episode is sponsored by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football playoff time now to basketball. We've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, guess what? You can find those at betonline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get, in, get your betting info fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. My name is Zach Seiko. Thanks so much for making Locked On Nittany Lines your first listen today. For your second listen today, you got to check out the brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. It is basketball season. Everything you need to know leading up to March Madness about college basketball, it's all in one place. Plus, you get big name experts, you get big name insiders, big name coaches and players. It's Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. And thank you so much for the support on YouTube. I really appreciate it. Now over 600 subscribers for the Locked On Nittany Lions channel. Really does mean a lot to me that I can continue to bring this content to everyone that appreciates it. So if you haven't already, please do subscribe. Uh, please comment, leave any feedback, any questions you would like me to answer in upcoming episodes. Uh, and, you know, let, let's have the, and just when I leave a question in the comments, you know, con Something that brings up a debate uh, good for uh, Penn State football uh, to see where everyone thinks the team is headed for 2023. And part of that conversation is now it's the elephant in the room, the wide receiver room, particularly uh, Devin Carter was literally a huge get for Penn State. And now he's gone. Um, but in Penn State now has to pivot. They got to go back to the transfer portal and say, uh, who can we get at wide receiver? And interestingly enough, Tyrone Broden postponed his commitment that was another big wide receiver that penn state uh is was after uh yesterday he said he was going to commit he was promoting it and then the day of wednesday said i'm actually not committing he said will not be committing today my recruitment is still open he tweeted that out uh he's six foot seven and if you go to the he's from out of bowling green and if you go to bowling green's website it says that he is the tallest 
player in college football, that he's the biggest wide receiver in college football. Uh, he is still a legitimate option and honestly my preferred one because if Penn State was going to secure Devin Carter's commitment, they weren't going to go after two big body, tall type of wide receivers. They would have looked for somebody that had uh, maybe more of a Jahan Dotson build, someone who's 5'11", uh, plays a little bit more of a speed role. They were going to look for the just basically a smaller wide receiver. They weren't going to go after two, two taller players. Um, and Penn State's going to recruit him more intensely now, uh, especially since he's postponed. Uh, his commitment and his recruitment is still open now. It seems like from reports that it's down to Penn State and Oklahoma. Oklahoma is going to be tough. That's going to be a tough one to beat out. Um, but we'll see what happens here. He's he's not the Broden's not the only option here. Uh, he's actually my preferred uh, of the remaining ones. And we'll get to Dante Cephas in just a moment. But Penn State sought out. They wanted to get two wide receivers. They they're down to zero. They were halfway there, and now they're not. They're back to zero. Uh, Romello Brinson out of Miami of Florida, former four star recruit, uh, committed to Manny Diaz. Brought this up in another episode just recently. Uh, Brinson's important because he already has a previous relationship to Manny Diaz, and he didn't want to play for Mario Cristobal. He committed to to Diaz. So how's that? Prior relationship isn't enough for him to transfer in. Uh, there really hasn't been anything. Just he, he went and did a campus visit. Apparently it went well, but there really hasn't been any indicators since. Um, he's still kind of biding his time here. We'll see how that one goes. Now, Penn State's really banking on Dante Cephas at this point. Um, he returned to Kent State to finish classes. It sounds like he's going to graduate after the spring semester. And then that commitment's going to come later on, and it's just a matter of when. Uh, it, it could come in January, could come in February. Uh, we don't know because he's he's just studying and just kind of real, really, truly taking his time and focusing on academics, which I completely respect. Uh, but this is what it's down to: Penn State, Pitt, down the pit, and, and UCLA. Now. Pitt is where he's from. He's he went to Penn Hills High School. He's from that area that towards the western side of Pennsylvania. Um, and one of these three is not like the other. UCLA is kind of the odd one in there. If it was down to Penn State and Pitt, I, I'd get it. Uh, and Penn State should win that battle head to head. But he did actually visit UCLA and somebody that uh, Chip Kelly is someone that he actually has a really good relationship with, almost committed out there when he was uh, coming out of high school, believe it or not. So now it says that Penn State was in the clear lead. There was a 99% chance that he was going to be a Nittany Lion. Um, when you talk to him, reporters talk to him, and he said, I don't know where people got that from, uh, simply. Uh, he said, I don't, I didn't make any announcements. I didn't, I said I had a good visit, uh, but I didn't say, you know, I was, I was going to commit to Penn state. So he, he admitted that it was a little premature that people were saying that Dante Cephas was a sure thing to Penn state. So uh, apparently now Pitt has the inside track to land the hometown kid, uh, but Penn state's still right in the thick of it. I would say it's a 50, 50 shot between Pitt and Penn state, uh, but they're again, going to recruit a little more aggressively here, given that Devin Carter is no longer in the fold. There's Freddie Roberson, someone we've talked about uh, here. He's out of Eastern Washington. Uh, and I like this player a lot. Six foot two catch and traffic ability. Uh, not afraid of contact, not afraid of contact, solid route running good in open space too, for someone with his size. Um, but that's against weaker competition at Eastern Washington. So can he make the jump? Mitchell Tinsley absolutely dominated at Western Kentucky. And then we saw that the Big Ten was uh, definitely there was a, a speed difference for him, if you will. Uh, I could see that being the case for Roberson, but maybe he adapts a little differently. And, and to, to wrap it all up, you know, losing Devin Carter and not having success in the transfer portal at wide receiver. I think that Taylor Stubblefield is one hell of a coach uh, and I want him to stay and be the guy, but I do find it a little interesting and it's a little disappointing why Penn state is struggling to recruit guys out of the transfer portal, especially when you have drew Aller, you have, Singleton and Allen, you have a, a full, uh, a full set of offensive linemen. Like they're Mike Yersich uh, showed what kind of coordinator he is. This is a place you want to play. So what, what ultimately is the holdup? It, is it 
you, you're concerned about not getting the same amount of targets because Penn State is naturally going to be a run first offense. I, I would think that's a drawback. Um, NIL in some cases, as we've seen, because they've missed on Dante Thornton. Dante Thornton went to Tennessee, ran from Oregon to Tennessee. Jimmy Horn Jr., South Florida to Colorado, and Deion Sanders, uh, Dorian Singer to USC. Uh, Devontez Walker, another Kent State wide receiver going to North Carolina. Caden Prather to uh, Maryland, leaving West Virginia. So uh, it, it really means that the in-house guys are going to have to grow up uh, really fast. And I'm talking about the youngsters because we you know, Ke Keandre Lambert-Smith is the obvious choice to become that new leading wide receiver. But it's going to be up to Amari Evans. It's going to be up to Caden Saunders. It's going to be up to Liam Clifford, Jaden Dot, and Christian Driver, who's making that switch from cornerback safety, defensive back to his dad's position, wide receiver. So are those guys ready to pick up the mantle and have a sophomore, a year two breakout? Or are they guys that are still developing? They're still learning. They're still getting up to speed. I think a guy like a Caden Saunders, who was an early enrollee, could be uh, in a huge, have a huge advantage getting into the slot there. Liam Clifford has been with the program now for multiple years, was a redshirt freshman this past year. What is year three going to look like for Sean's little brother? Um, so uh, Jaden Dotton had a really good spring ball last, last go around. So it, it's a matter of keeping an eye on those guys and seeing what they do because Penn state has not been shy to say and admit that they want wide receivers. And why do they want to, uh, that means that there's something lacking right now, but hopefully the off season can change that. And maybe it'll motivate those guys that are currently in the locker room This is locked on Nittany lions, Penn state men's basketball with an emphatic win. A, a milestone has been achieved by one of the star players and I got, I'm going to give you my takeaways about it all coming up next. Today's episode is sponsored by Built. Are you looking for a delicious treat, but you don't want all of the fat and calories? Then you got to try Built Bar. We just got through the holidays, and I know my goal is to eat a little healthier this year. And if you're like me, where you want to eat healthier, but you don't want to compromise the taste, then man, I've just got the thing for you. You've got to try Built. With Built, healthy, healthy is actually tasty. Seriously, they're so delicious and they're so good for you. Perfect for a New Year's resolution. What makes Built Bars so good? Well, for starters, they're all covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. And they come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond, I'm not sure how Built does it, uh, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. And what's even better is that they are healthy, only 130 calories and four grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. Now, you don't need to wait around to get the box. Uh, for years, we've been talking about ordering your Built Bars at Built.com, and now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today. Walk to the pharmacy section. Grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. And if you're close to Sam's Club, just run right in. Grab a 13-bar box with some of the hit flavors like brown batter and churro you can thank me later boy did penn state men's basketball make me eat my words they won yesterday 85 to 66 over indiana and i i gotta say if you saw the crossover uh, jacob root of locked on hoosiers and i uh, jumped on a segment together and we were spot on with the over. So if you took that bet, uh, you're welcome. But I, I did say Indiana. However, I admitted that it was truly a toss up. You know, Ken Palm had it very close. The difference of one or two points. Um, Vegas ended up having Penn State as, as a final when it closed as a two point favorite. I, I knew that home court would be huge for Penn State. Uh, especially after playing at Michigan and then going out to the Palestra where Penn plays. So to return home against an important team like Indiana, and this, this was the time to play Indiana. Indiana is banged up. They are a top 10 team when 100% of their lineup is healthy, but they're missing two starters. Uh, Trace Jackson Davis is uh, back in the lineup, but he is not 100%, and Penn State held him fairly in check. I thought he'd have a better game. But just all around, Penn State 
was lights out and it is confirmed. So while I didn't think that Penn State could win this game and, and I said, you know, I'm, I'm jumping off the bandwagon that they're not necessarily an NCAA tournament team this year. What I've been spot on with is that Andrew Funk is the X factor. It is Andrew Funk. If you slow him down, you can beat Penn State 99 times out of 100. But when he is red hot, when he is lights out, Penn State, honestly, you don't have a shot. You don't have a chance if you're playing against Penn State with an Andrew Funk that is going to be shooting like the way he did last night. 7 of 12 behind the arc, 23 points, but he wasn't even the leading scorer. It was Seth Lundy. Seth Lundy, guess what he was? Also 7 of 12 from three-point land, and he was the leading scorer, had 25 points, and even better, he had a milestone. He reached a career mark of 1,000 points at Penn State, and he did so with a nice, emphatic dunk. I Indiana's plan, they thought it would be smart to double Jalen Pickett, and I don't, I don't blame them. I, I think Jalen Pickett has uh, a right to be in the conversation for Big Ten Player of the Year. I think he has All-America conversations around him. We'll see if he gets that recognition he deserves. But he's been on a tear. Uh, it... <laughs> Indiana allowed Jalen Pickett to do a little more of his point guard responsibilities rather than a combo guard where he was able to distribute and be more of a facilitator. And that's what opened up Andrew Funk and Seth Lundy and Jalen Pickett was a big part of that. He, he was able to actually be a true point guard in this game. So uh, if, and if Indiana showed us anything in this case, it was, what they did against Penn state is what not to do uh, or else Penn state will run all over you. Uh, and really my, my final takeaway from this game, I know Keba Jai and Jamil Brown were the, the headliners in this class of 2022, but Evan Mahaffey has emerged probably as the best freshman. He is the best freshman uh, in this class so far. Just, just last night, 12 points in 13 minutes, I like the effort from the kid. He never quits. That energy is infectious. That effort is infectious. Just the way that, you know, Penn State will kind of back down on defense a little bit. And Evan Mahaffey, he's just hanging around. He's by the backboard. He goes up, gets a rebound against four other Hoosiers, and then puts it home for the slam dunk. I mean, that was just one play. But Evan Mahaffey, even if he doesn't get the rebound or doesn't win the loose ball, he's always going after it, it seems like. And that's just... Uh, you can't put a statistic to that. That doesn't show up in the box score. Now, uh, up next for Penn State men's basketball, because they got to capitalize on this. They're now 12 and five overall. They're three and three in the Big Ten. As it stands, they're seventh in the conference. OK, that's that's about where I had them seventh or eighth or so and finishing 500 in league this year. But it doesn't get easier. Uh, you caught an Indiana team that was down. Can you capitalize on it? Can you carry the momentum over to Wisconsin? You got to go to Madison and play a ranked Badgers team in five days time. This is a slow team. They're very good defensively. Is Andrew Funk going to be able to keep up the shooting? Is Miles Dredd going to pick up the slack? Seth Lundy, he was lights out from, from three-point range. Can they all do that in this game against Wisconsin? We'll wait and find out. Wisconsin will be probably the favorite in that game, and we'll talk about it more as it approaches. And Penn State definitely deserved the win. Uh, it was a nice one, 85-66. to 66. Now let's see if they can build some momentum and build another winning streak uh, against comparable talent, comparable teams. That's going to do it for me here on Locked on Nittany Lions. And coming up, we're going to discuss more about Penn State men's basketball, uh, see where they are, talk to some other experts about the team, and are they truly a tournament team? Am I jumping off the bandwagon a bit too early? We'll get confirmation on that. And then the transfer portal, it, it's, it's, it's truly a portal. It is spinning too much for Penn State right now. As the updates come in, they'll be right here on Locked on Nittany Lions. Before I let you go, I just want to say thank you again for making this show your first listen. But I, I, I ask you, check out the new show, Locked On College Basketball. Everything you need to know about college basketball, all in one place, big name experts, big name insiders, coaches, and players. That's Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure you subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lines on YouTube if you haven't already. And you can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Nittany. And I'll talk to you very soon.